So our next speaker is Elias Papa Giorgio. Um, anyway, uh, it's good to uh, be there, even if it's a, a virtual presence and not a physical presence. Uh, as was mentioned, uh, our office is here in Athens, in Greece. Um, we've been working on uh, several things, cultural buildings such as this museum uh, of glass uh, outside Strasbourg in France that will be completed in a year. Uh, we're working on a mixed-use development outside uh, Paris that involves housing, uh, hospitality, offices, and public spaces as well as another regeneration, urban regeneration project, uh, really in the uh, downtown of, uh, in the center of Paris. Uh, and we're doing some other um, smaller things such as housing, uh, private houses. Um, <clears throat> we are a new sort of uh, office in, in Greece and in Athens, I, as I was mentioned, I was before for 13 years in, in New York as a partner at uh, Sowil. Um, and uh, one of our uh, most recent projects is the one I will present to you today that uh, fits uh, with the topic of the panel, which is the, the redesign of the facade of Piraeus Tower, uh, which is one of the most iconic buildings in, in Athens and in Greece. It's actually the second tallest building uh, in Greece and sits right on the port of uh, Piraeus, uh, which is the, the most sort of important port of, uh, of Greece and also one a very important commercial port uh, in, in Europe. The tower uh, has a very interesting story, uh, the existing structure. It was built in the 70s, in around 1973, uh, during the uh, uh, dictatorship actually here in Athens. And uh, it was built under this sort of spe special law that allowed for this high-rise uh, structure in the city. But uh, while the main structure and the facade were completed in 1973. The rest of the building was uh, has never been completed, so it was left uh, abandoned for uh, 47 years now. Uh, so it's like this: uh, uh, what is called um, sleeping giant on the port uh, of Piraeus, uh, an empty, an empty uh, cell, an empty uh, building on the port. At the moment, though, uh, there is a renewed interest um, in the neighborhood and especially after, war, after 10 years of, um, uh, of a horrible economic crisis here in Greece, uh, there is some uh, new interest and new developments in the area. Large uh, office buildings being built as the ones you see on the screen uh, uh, by the same client that took over the Piraeus Tower. Um, and as well as some smaller interesting developments, some, some uh, important international art galleries, uh, as well as restaurants that come into the neighborhood and transform uh, this sort of formerly almost like industrial neighborhood in this very uh, important uh, and prominent place in, in Greece and in Athens for uh, living, working, uh, and also enjoying culture. Uh, under this uh, uh, framework, we uh, um, participated in and won a competition to redesign the facade uh, of the tower that it will, uh, the client will turn it into office spaces and retail in the lower floors uh, of the podium, as you can see, uh, as well introduce some other functions such as uh, public uh, sort of spaces, public terraces, and uh, a restaurant on the uh, uh, on the top floors um, as you see this is like a really it's like a big structure compared to everything else in the area so um, our intention was how can we uh, sort of integrate this uh, structure that has been abandoned for so many years into the life uh, of the city uh, but also kind of like reflect this very dynamic energy of uh, the surrounding uh, neighborhood and particularly also of the port, which is a place uh, uh, that is kind of like the gate of the city where uh, uh, 
millions of, of, uh, of foreigners and tourists pour in the country every year. And it's a sort of an access to, to the islands. So uh, our approach was to, uh, on the one hand, uh, um, sort of trying to mitigate the scale uh, with the facade between the structure and the city. So we kind of like broke it down into smaller uh, pieces, uh, but also create something that can be quite uh, um, dynamic that maybe can lighten up a little bit uh, the weight of that structure. So we, the, the facade idea is that sort of this pattern that wraps around uh, the building, creating this sort of spiral movement around uh, the volume of the tower. And this is happening by breaking down the facade into, let's say, uh, a window module uh, that repeats on every floor, but that it's slightly uh, moved uh, from one floor to the other. Uh, so to create this uh, movement, as I mentioned. So this system basically it's a shading structure. So it offers uh, shades, as you know, uh, in in, Greece, in Athens, uh, um, heat is a problem with this type of buildings. Uh, so we had to be very mindful on how to uh, uh, cool down uh, the building and offer enough shading for the facade, uh, but also because of its position and height to kind of like amplify and optimize the views to the surroundings. So on the one hand, uh, we have great views towards the water. And on the other uh, side, we have great views to the city, the Acropolis and, and the mountains that surround uh, Athens. So um, our proposal uh, was also kind of like working with the existing structure, which is quite, uh, quite particular. It's, it's this custom place concrete structure with all the vertical elements besides the cores being uh, uh, on the facade. So uh, uh, you have this like really present concrete structure on uh, uh, the facade, creating a very uh, kind of like rigid and austere grid. And um, our intention was again to play with that. So this sort of movement of the facade pattern uh, wraps around the rigid structure and plays with the verticality of the existing structure. So the facade that you can see more clear here, looking from below uh, uh, up, it consists of vertical and horizontal uh, louvers um, that provide the shading uh, that are displaced horizontally from one floor to the other. But as you can see, they also have a soft and gent uh, gentle rotation from one floor to the other. So they start uh, basically from uh, zero and you can see it clearly, sorry, on this diagram, they start from like zero degrees, like being perpendicular to the facade, and they rotate up to like 60 degrees towards the top floor. Um, and this happens to, on the one hand, optimize uh, the views and, and the shading, uh, and on the other hand, to also like really uh, direct uh, specific views, uh, especially to the floor, to the upper uh, level floors. But this soft rotation, gives also a very uh, unique presence to the building and enhances this idea of this dynamic facade as uh, um, it's not a homogeneous uh, pattern, but it really transforms as, you, uh, as it sort of moves across the height uh, of the building. You can see it here uh, in more detail. Uh, it's basically one uh, facade module. And speaking about economy and efficiency, uh, especially of materials in this case, we thought that you can actually create this very rich and, and dynamic experience uh, um, with a minimum, let's say, uh, use of uh, customization. So we have designed this one single uh, panel that includes, it's a unitized panel of glass and uh, the louver system, and that repeats. Uh, it's just uh, the way it's been installed with this displacement that, that allows to create this sense of movement on the facade. And in order to accommodate the, the different kind of like rotations of the fins, we have designed a special bracket uh, that connects uh, 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 the fins and, and allows for the bracket to accommodate the various angles uh, rather than having to, to build a, a custom fin each time. And the result is uh, this sort of soft movement across the surface of the facade. Uh, and uh, as you can see, we have also included two uh, different types of public spaces, one on the lower sort of podium level with uh, um, 
in, in a very sort of close proximity to the water and, uh, and high up uh, we have proposed this sort of observation deck uh, uh, that enjoys uh, beautiful views of the surroundings. Um, but I was, uh, as I was saying about the, the pattern of the facade, um, it's important that uh, anywhere uh, you stand, it really creates a, a very unique experience because of the displacement and the rotation. Um, uh, so from specific uh, uh, points of view, the building appears to be uh, more opaque and solid, uh, whereas from other viewpoints, uh, it appears to be much more open and, and transparent. And this uh, effect is also enhanced by the variations of uh, daylight uh, uh, during the course of the day. So uh, because the, the fins are not all perpendicular, they capture the light in different ways and reflect the lights in different ways, creating this uh, very dynamic presence uh, in the city. Um, in the lower floor, in the podiums, we have kind of like repeated this uh, louver system idea. Uh, but there we also propose this uh, hanging plant uh, system over the facade, plants that hang uh, from uh, um, the, the, the podium terrace. And that is to sort of bring a little bit of, of vegetation and, and green uh, closer to uh, the level of the street. Uh, Piraeus is a neighborhood that is really lacking uh, green areas. So we thought that this can be an opportunity to, uh, let's say, improve the experience of the street uh, through uh, the design of our facade. Obviously, the facade is not designed only uh, from uh, outside in, but more from inside out. So we really took consideration of the, the let's say, well-being or experience of the users, which are going to be uh, um, workers that will be working in office spaces. So um, the facade is calibrated in order to uh, amplify and, and allow them to enjoy unblocked views of the port and the city, uh, uh, but also to mitigate glare uh, um, um, from entering uh, the space and allow uh, people to work comfortably on screens, uh, while also allowing them to work uh, during most hours of the day under natural uh, daylight, eliminating the, the need for, for extensive use of artificial light. And at the same time, uh, as you can see on the right side, because of the rotation, uh, um, some floors, let's say the lower levels, have less access to great views. Uh, but there we have aligned uh, the louvers to frame views of the planted uh, terrace. Uh, uh, and as you go up, they turn to rotate and, and point towards the views of the, of the ocean and the city. We have run an extensive uh, um, uh, solar uh, study and uh, as we start the, the sort of schematic design right now after the competition uh, we're working closely with our facade engineer Achilles Lokalahan. Uh, the sustainability ambitions are quite uh, high and at the moment we think the, the system can uh, reduce the solar radiation uh, by 45% uh, percent on the facade. And if we account for all the, the mechanical systems and the needs for uh, the performance of the interior spaces, we uh, are sort of estimating that with the current design, we can reduce by 20% uh, the cooling needs uh, of the whole sort of office structure. Uh, yeah, we uh, finished the competition uh, a few months ago. We just started uh, the schematic design um, and uh, there's a large team and, and uh, the building is set to be, uh, the facade is set to be completed in 2023. So uh, looking forward to speaking to you possibly again then with uh, the, the finished and realized photographs of the uh, project. Uh, thank you for your attention and, and your invitation again. Thank you very much. Quick question for you. Are you still there? Yes, I am. Um, so you talked about the sustainability um, objectives of the project um, and the analysis of the cost savings that, or the, the savings in cooling uh, that you could achieve 
if you implement this more uh, technologically complex um, glazing and shading system. Do you, are you doing any kind of analysis on how long perhaps these, these integrated technologies that, would, that are optimizing your building and making it high performance could be paid back with the savings in, in energy use over time? Um, actually, I mean, the, the, um, I think what we have up to now, it's quite uh, uh, fundamental, meaning and it's part of the, of the minimum needs of, of, the, of the building. So we try to be very efficient in that. So we really focused on, let's say, natural light and, and uh, shading. Uh, but what we are, uh, we're trying to be even more aggressive at the moment. So we are now um, doing the study you, you mentioned, but for integrating uh, uh, PV uh, photovoltaic panels on the one side of the louvers. So mm. there is an idea of maybe, uh, have, because also of their rotation, we can really optimize and target some of the louvers uh, uh, being really pointed to the right uh, angles. And uh, we are exploring several uh, technologies on that and, and also running a, a sort of payback uh, cost analysis at the moment. So I don't have a, a specific answer right now for that, but uh, we are, these are some technologies, additional technologies that we are uh, exploring on uh, the energy consumption of the building. So adding renewable, a renewable energy yes. component. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Great to hear. Well, thank you very much. I, we're glad that you were able to join us. Thank you. Hopefully we'll hear again from you when the building is finished. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank All you. Right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.